Thanks for tuning into the Boston Roll channel. Liking the video and subscribing to the channel are free and easy for you, and they help me out a lot. If you want to go further with your support, Patreon and YouTube membership offer access to the Boston Roll Discord community, early access to lists, written content, things like that. You can have me play your deck on the channel, and the highest tiers come with individual coaching sessions. If you use YouTube membership, you also get sweet badges and emotes integrated here into YouTube. You can support the channel while you shop at tcgplayer.com by using my affiliate link in the video description. And you can play any deck anytime by using a cardhoarder.com loan account on Magic Online. If you want to wear your support, check out the merch store. And of course, thanks for being here. Now let's go play some Magic. Welcome back to another Boston Roll Legacy video. Today I am updating a deck from Patreon subscriber Dalton. Last time Dalton sent me this deck, it was a four color Green Sun Zenith shell with the food chain combo tucked into it. And at the end of that league, I did a pretty major update where the Green Sun Zenith package didn't impress and I felt like the deck just needed more early interaction, needed some more ways to stand up to creatures because we were just sort of playing off curve and the combo sort of shoved into a deck that was playing off curve already. And this is where I landed at the end of the last video. You can go check that one out. It was a uh, Yorian four color Zenith on this channel if you want to check that one out. But this version is pure Bant. There is no Leovold, no Grist, no Dryad Arbor, no Noble Hierarch. Just all the things that were part of the Green Sun Zenith package are out. And just good cards on the front are in. Replaced selection with overall quality. And what we end up here is a three-color Yorion Bant deck that can do the fair thing. We've got Abundant Growth, Ice Fang, Coatl, and Recruiter of the Guard that go off with Yorian. So Yorian actually does have a good chance of drawing some cards in this deck. Four Uro, two Endurance. We got real threats here. Uh, Uro, the man himself, the reason to be banned, or blue-green at all, is, is present as a four of. Life from the Loam to go off with your Wastelands, your Triome, Field of the Dead, and Besaju. Got a loan package in here, a little loan ban action. Seven basic lands in this deck. Resistant to Wasteland should be able to get our mana up under us. You'll notice that all of the lands are snow covered and none of them are regular for Field of the Dead. I think that is fine. That is an intentional decision. I think it's more important that Ice Fang Coatl has Death Touch at a, in a reasonable time than it is that Field of the Dead is immediately active on turn seven every game. There's still something like 17 or 18 different land names in this deck without splitting the basics, and Ice Fang Coatl is an important piece of staying alive, because I remember playing this deck last time, and staying alive was a problem for me. The previous version didn't have Coatls in it, because it didn't have the lands to support it, and that was one of the first changes I made. We're rolling with that one. As far as the food chain combo goes, food chain, if you're new to Legacy or haven't seen this before, two and a green enchantment, Exile a creature you control at X mana of any one color, where X is 1 plus the exiled creature's mana value. Spend this mana only to cast creature spells. The flavor of this is that a 2 drop can eat a 1 drop and come into play a little early, then a 3 drop could eat that 2 drop, etc., and you work your way up the food chain. What we're doing is Eternal Scourge and Mist Hollow Griffin can be cast from exile. If you exile one of these, you get 5 mana. You cast it, you have one in the pool. You exile it again, you have two in the pool, etc. Every time you eat a Mist Hollow Griffin, then replay it from exile, you get one mana that can be spent on creatures. Then we win the game with our infinite creature mana. Recruiter of the Guard can search the deck for High Grade Crisis or Walking Ballista. Crisis draws your deck, gains a bunch of life, or draws as many cards as you want, and gains a bunch of life and is a giant creature behind. And Walking Ballista just kills your opponent. Pretty good deal. And if you ever find yourself with Food Chain and your Griffins in around, but no outlet for the infinite mana, these are just unkillable 3-3 flyers with Vigilance, kind of, because uh, you can attack with your three power flyers. Second main, you exile them and recast them, and then they're back. And they're untapped, ready to block. If your opponent ever tries to Lightning Bolt or Red Blast them or whatever they try to do, you just eat them in response, replay them next turn on their back. 
a lot of fair decks can't actually get through three unkillable threats. And that if it doesn't win the game on its own, it'll buy you time to find some cantrips and go off with the combo. One of my favorite pieces of technology in all of Legacy is specifically Manipulate Fate in the Food Chain deck. One in a blue sorcery, search your library for three cards, exile them, then draw a card. So you exile your Eternal Scourge and two Mist Holographins, and then you draw a card. This is functionally a draw four, because you can still cast these even without Food Chain. It's just like Manipulate Fate on two, Eternal Scourge on three, Flyer on four, Flyer on five. And you replace the Manipulate Fate because it also cantrips. Just two mana draw four, and it sets up your combo down the line. God, I love a Manipulate Fate. Very excited to cast that card. The main deck is kind of hard targeting fair matchups. Like the way you go over the top in fair matchups is something like Yorion. We have the, the mid range war kind of covered here with Abundant Growth, Ice Fang Kawaddle, Yorion, Uro. That is a robust package to overpower people who are trying to play fair. And then the sideboard's basically hard targeted at combo, Deafening Silence, Hall Breacher, Energy Flux, Hydro Blast, Fluster Storms, Surgicals, Seeds of Innocence, Collector Oof, Two Veil of Summers, and a Carpet of Flowers. Just whop. Bunch of things targeted at combo. Hydro Blast and Carpet are kind of targeted more at Delver than they are at combo, but. Delver is big enough of a fair deck and feels unfair sometimes that we want a little extra there. And Hydro Blast does overlap with a lot of combo. You'll notice in this deck, no Teferi, no Narset, which if I didn't have the food chain combo, I would be jamming those Planeswalkers in large numbers. I am a little worried about those Planeswalkers, but there are six forces in the main. There's three Prismatic ending, or four Prismatic ending in the main. Uh, we're doing our best here to pressure them and combo out but when you have to dedicate 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 at least 12 you could argue 14 slots to putting a combo in your deck you lose a lot of the just generic fringe cards and by fringe i mean like fringe to the core of the deck not fringe playable because obviously those cards are extremely playable but you you lose some of the accoutrements and we're just doing something else with that slot instead. The last thing I want to address, because I know people will ask, is Zagoth Triome over the new Streets of New Capenna Bant slash Brokers Triome. I don't know what that card's actually called. They all have really weird names. But I think that occasionally getting a Prismatic Ending for four off of one of your lands is going to be better than your Triome making the three core colors of the deck, because we have tons of basics, like lots of access to colored mana. I, I think that that off-color pip is going to be more valuable overall. Neither may come up in this league. Like It, it may just like, we're, we're never mana screwed and we never need to ending for four. And Abundant Growth can also get ending up to four or even five if you have two of them. So we have lanes to get prismatic ending for four or five but i think that the the triome doing that work is going to be more important and my last comment on the mana base is dalton only owns one of each duel so i was tasked with constructing a mana base that does not have more than one of each dual land in it we got tropical island tundra and savannah all as one of us fill in the rest with basic lands triomes and techie lands and I guess the la <laughs> that reminded me, there's no back to basics in this deck that's full of basics. And the reason for that is we are also a heavy non-basic deck. The fact that there are seven basics doesn't necessarily outbalance the fact that we have 22 non-basics in the deck as well. And between Red Blast and Beseju, back to basics just isn't what it used to be. That permanent is extremely answerable by every deck that would care about it. And there's a good chance that it'll hurt us as much as it hurts an opponent. That was certainly a cascade of thoughts while I was trying to sign off. So I'm going to I'm gonna clip it off there. This is Dalton's now Bant food chain. Let's do it. I'm on the draw in round one. I'm going to keep this hand. I have Force of Will, lands, a cantrip, and the main combo piece. Food chain is the hardest combo piece to find 
you have tutors and manipulate fate for every other part of the food chain, but the food chain itself is the one you need to come up with. Ooh, ancient tomb. Lotus petal. I might ignore a blood moon. Jessica's will. Okay, we're doing combo stuff. Oh, they want to add red for cards in my hand. I don't think I can let that happen. This could be bait, or I could just die. I don't know, but I'm forcing it. Pitching the Coatl. I think Brainstorm's going to be more important. Planning in some sort of Ruby Storm. Or Ruby Storm adjacent strategy. Okay. I'm not going to need two food chains against this deck. I don't think they're going to have counter spells or removal. And put... I guess I could put the forest away. I'm going to get Tropical Island here. And Abundant Growth. A basic island. Okay. Two thirds of the combo are present, but my shields are down. My opponent has missed their land drop and taken no action the last several turns. Don't be fooled though. Doesn't necessarily mean anything. I have options here. I can put Yorian in my hand, or I can jam food chain and hope to top deck a payoff. If I have a griffin, I can have infinite mana next turn. All right. Since my shields are down anyway, I'm just going to put my thing into play and hope they don't kill me and hope I win. Come on, Recruiter of the Guard. Oh, God. That might be better. Right, I didn't draw my combo, so I'll just take them out on the mana that they haven't even used that yet. This is a Lotus Petal, Rite of Flame, etc. deck, so the fact they have no lands doesn't mean they can't play the game. Okay. Uh, they could also Echo of Eons me just at any point. They're at eight cards in hand now. Are we just sadly going to discard, or have they been sandbagging enough to win? Okay, uh, we get another redraw here. Still can't combo. I'm going to Wasteland. And then I'm going to Yorian with Food Chain Mana, second main. Draw a bunch of cards. Make blue with Mist Holographin. Opponent politely asked if they're dead now. Is it? Unfortunately, no. Just casting Yorian. This is a heavy click combo. If you are playing on Magic Online, kind of what you sign up for. Exile the two Abundant Growths. I get to draw two cards in the end step. And I can bounce Yorion with Caracas and refire if I want to. Brainstorm is some, some help, I guess. But I can recast Yorion and draw two extra cards every turn. Uh oh. Desperate Ritual. Seething Song. Ooh, uh, this card is not beatable. They don't have their land drop, which could help. Still think this is worth a brainstorm. If I can find an answer to this. Uh oh. Well, shields are down. Good luck, have fun. And I do actually have the prismatic ending for five because of the uh, abundant growths. Oh, that's lucky. Okay, I'm going to attack for my seven. And you may play those cards this turn. Okay, so Harnfeld does not help next turn. Time for a lot of value clicking. I am going to play Misty Rainforest and activate it because I know I don't want the top card on my deck. I'm going to get Savannah here. Or I could get Misty Rainforest, but Force on top. Just make sure I don't die. Yeah, that, or uh, Mystic Sanctuary. Green, white. Blue color color. Yeah, okay. I can Mystic Sanctuary Force of Will to the top of the deck. And then that lets me burrow into Force of Will. The comboing out on Magic Online with Food Chain isn't actually that bad, but fair use of Food Chain is pretty bad. Right, so I can play the front half of Uro now, which draws me the Force of Will, puts the land into play. Putting the land into play, I still can't quite prismatic ending and oh wait can i oh yeah that is exactly what i played for yeah so i could prismatic ending the harn fell and bounce yorian okay, uh green blue white red black white blue black red okay they know what i'm doing and they've They've conceded, yeah. Removing Harnfell, I get to escape Uro, I get to cast Yorian again, flickering my Abundant Groves. Yeah, we're in good shape here. 
value game. They don't believe for a second this deck can be Deafening Silence, so I'm bringing that in. Hydroblast comes in against the Mono Red combo deck, for sure. Collector Oof will probably be good here. We saw Harnfell and Lotus Battle at the very least. I expect Lion's Eye Diamond as well. I want Hull Breacher, Flusterstorm. We haven't seen them draw any cards yet, but I expect Echo of Eons. There's a good chance that's in the deck. Is a suspected Echo of Eons enough to bring in Surgical Extraction? Is that something I care about? I'm not sure. A Swords to Plowshares can hit Bergy. Loam is not going to be part of this matchup. And Bergy is rough. And we, we've seen Bergy. Uh, she arrived as the Horn, the backside, but Bergy is a tough card to beat. I have some removal. I can Hydroblast Bergy. I think I want my combo at full strength because we might end up in a foot race when the dust settles, kind of like that game where I force willed their first turn play without a whole lot going on, and then it was just who could make it happen first. Endurance is a flash threat that can block or push through Bergy. Endurance can also shortcut a food chain. If you evoke Endurance, then eat it for four mana. In response to its sacrifice trigger, you get four mana for a zero mana investment, and you can supercharge a food chain. I like that quite a bit. I don't want to cut any blue cards. Prismatic Ending, I do still like. Maybe I have to drop an Endurance. I'm bringing in Hall Breacher, which is its own flash threat. Shaven Endurance, and... And Wasteland did come in strong that game, but it's not actually, like, really good most of the time. This game's going to usually be a lot faster than that. Okay. I'm going to do this. Running out of time to figure it out, so Wasteland, you're gone. Uh, well... I'm missing colored mana, but I have my best card in the entire deck in my hand, and I can curve into another good card. So Force of Negation can buy me a turn, and then I got a Spike of Fetchland for Savannah. Ruby Medallion. I don't think that's the fight. You can have that. <laughs> Always had it. I think I actually want to get Tundra rather than Savannah, though because uh, the, that turns on the cantrips and stuff, which are going to be better going along. We might just get a scoop on turn one here. We'll see if their Molda 5 can beat a Deafening Silence. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep, it could not. On to the next round. It's round two. I'm on the play. Tragically, no green mana in this hand. That otherwise is pretty great. I'm actually going to keep this. Have some faith in the deck to deliver green mana. As soon as I find green, I unlock all my colors off Abundant Growth, and I have Food Chain, Eternal Scourge, and Hydroid Crisis. It's all right here. Like, the whole shit is right here in my hand. I'm not leading on Field of the Dead. Uh-oh. <laughs> my secrets. Okay, I've been thought-seized. They now know that I have this entire combo and no mana to do anything. <laughs> Now I'll play Field of the Dead. It does expose me to Wasteland. Oh god, is this Curses? Are we getting Trinisphered? Robert Confidantus. And Pithing Needle. Please name Food Chain. What they do with this needle will tell me a lot. Like, are they going to predict a Planeswalker as a possibility? Are they going to name Food Chain not understanding how f that Food Chain is a mana ability and that this doesn't work? Are they going to just, like, pick a fetch land, just, like, name Misty Rainforest and try to spike one of my outs? Let's find out together. One thing I do know is that Black is really bad at answering a resolved enchantment. They named Beseju who endures. All right, clever. That is a card in my deck. Green mana! Oh, Walking Blista. As far as things that aren't green mana go, I would love to kill this Dark Confidant. Bang. And that's one of my win cons with food chain out but it's fine i feel like that was probably worth doing these stompy decks need to reload all right now we're in the in the shit playing eternal scourge might be a little risky but like if they edict it it ends up in my graveyard if they try to like fatal push it ooh, oppo agent well glad i didn't draw the fetch land holy shit exhibition map okay they're this deck yeah, the agent actually makes this extremely complicated. 
another abundant growth. I'm going to attack with Scourge, because they're an Ancient Tomb deck. And they're already at 14 from their own actions. Pop Yorian in my hand here. See where this map's going. Dark Depths, okay. Dark Ritual. Thought Seizing Me. They're at 7. They could go Vampire Hex Mage Dark Depths here. And it would be very difficult for me to win the game. I would have to draw exactly Basic Forest into Abundant Growth, drawing Swords to Plowshares. Oh, uh, they gave me an out to rep Wasteland. Let's punish! Uh, okay. I am dead. Yeah, the op opposition agent shutting down the polluted delta or the misty rainforest too much. Okay, GG. Yeah, my awkward mana came back to bite me. A real shame. We're on the mono black depths stompy deck here. Veil vale of Summer. Black is one of the things you can turn off with that card. But there's not a whole lot of sideboard for this matchup. Collector Oof can shut off Expedition Map. It also shuts off Walking Ballista, so it's not free. But if I'm doing Walking Ballista stuff, then I can exile the Oof to Food Chain. So uh, when I'm ready, I can get rid of it. That's not a big deal. If I can get Wasteland looping with Loam, uh, Caracas is good. I need answers to Opposition Agent because that card was actually devastating. Uro and Endurance both help beat Merit Lage. So does Mist Holographin. Just a lot of ways to gain life and block flyers in this deck. Ice Sink Waddle. We're actually really set up against Merit Lage. It's just that hand didn't come together. Might be Force of Negations. Between Dark Confidant and Opposition Agent, there's a lot of things that are creatures in the deck that I care about. Manipulate Fate is so good, but Opposition Agent is so bad. I think I still want the Manipulate. Just the, the draw four against the, the Mono Black Discard deck is pretty insane. They don't really use their Graveyard, to my knowledge. So Endurance might be worse than I need it to be. They're probably going to have Ley Lines or some way to pressure my Graveyard and make Uro worse. But Uro pitching to Force is still good. Yeah, I think Uro is really important in all, all of these, like, random bullshit matchups. That was always the power of Uro. Uro like, blue-green, the, the Bant core is kind of fallen off as a preferable control core these days, because Jeskai and Grixis are both good against it. Especially Jeskai. Uh, yeah, this hand's great. Interesting. But Uro is really good at just plowing through bullshit. Just... The legacy card pool is huge. There's bullshit everywhere, and Uro's really good at just mashing through it. And this certainly qualifies. All right, gonna get my basic forest and growth up. Make sure last game situation doesn't happen again. Gotta watch out for Dark Ritual Oppo Agent here. They spend their mana. Okay. Do you respect Manipulate Fate? Is the question I have for my opponent. And I hope the answer is no. Manipulate Fate is easily the best card in my hand. It took Ballista. Deal. It must be trying to get a Bob going. I'm going to fetch Basic Island right now where the, when they can't Dark Ritual out an Agent. and Cast my Search My Deck card right now while well, they can't Ritual out an Agent. And I'm going to draw four. Eternal Scourge. Mist Hollow Griffin. And Mist Hollow Griffin. Out of the deck. And I draw a card. Oh, I found Veil of Summer. Give me a turn to make something happen here. Urza Saga. Oop. I either forgot or didn't know they were an Urza Saga deck in my, my travels here, so that's awkward. I'm going to brainstorm now while the getting's good. Uh, yeah, that's good shit. Put back, manipulate fate, and Savannah. I'm going to fetch an island right now while they can't stop me. Yeah, I should have seeds and or probably not the the flux, but at least seeds. Oh yeah, they're a, a stage saga de deck. Yikes. Didn't they see the coaddle in my hand? Does that mean they're going to kill me or they just forgot? All right. I'm going to go for it. Okay. I seem to have lined up a block. They have Helm Obedience in their hand. Really glad my deck has a oh, <laughs> has a combo in it right now, and there is that combo. 
Unfortunately, my green source is my only green source. Yeah, I think I have to shield up for a turn and then try to win next turn. Okay, I'm just passing with my mana available. Doing construct related business. I can protect my hand with Veil of Summer. Expedition map. They can make Merrill Age this turn, it doesn't matter. I don't know that they can actually can make Merrill Age, but if they do, it doesn't matter. All right, yeah, they can just slam Age right now. Sure. Okay, you have a 2020. Back for two. I am not going to quaddle this because I need the quaddle for mana in the end step. Blue green. Ice Fang quaddle. Draw a card. Go to my turn. Found another mana. Uh, may or may not actually help. Do I want to save my land drop? Because I'm going to draw my deck this turn. Food chain. Exile Quaddle or Eternal Scourge. All right, they just conceded. I appreciate that opponent. Yeah, exile, I'll Quaddle for Eternal Scourge, then Scourge cast Griffin, 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 etc. Get the whole squad in play. I have unlimited blue blockers for Merit Lage. Even if I do nothing else this game, Merit Lage is never connecting. But I have Recruiter that can get Krasis and then draw as many cards as I feel like and hold up Veil of Summer for a turn. Yeah. Dope. All right. Now that I am reminded acutely that they are a Saga deck, do I want Flux or Seeds? Probably Seeds. Do I want Oof? Did we see, we've seen Helm of Obedience. They're definitely a Helm A-line deck as well, which we did plan for. Does that mean I shave an Uro? I could shave Uro and get a Force of Negation back in. Oh, wait. Uh, I was in the process of thinking if I was shaving Oof. I just shaved Uro to make room for the seeds. Oof is still in the maybe pile. On the draw, extra Force of Negations can just buy me time, which is most of what I need. They can win without casting a non-creature spell. Just... The Dark Depths combo does not involve a non-creature spell regardless. There's no crop rotation in this version of the deck. The Veils are really good. Plow is really good. Okay, I'm going to leave in Oof. Seeds. Or do I want Flux over Oof? Oof can turn off Expedition Map, which is like a big enabler in the deck. But Oof doesn't actually remove anything that they're trying to do. Or pull ahead on anything. But I think I want Flux over Oof. And knowing with confidence that they're now a Leyline deck, I'm going to shave in another Uro. There's still two in there if we find ourselves in a fair game. But the, the Force of Negation can help against the other combo in their deck. I should have cut Loam for another Force. Too late now. All right, my hand's pretty good. In bad shape to a turn one opposition agent. Let's hope that doesn't happen. I do love the spread of hands that this deck presents. Just a pure Bant control deck. Even like goofing up the, the Bant strat with the combo still just feels good. One thing about Leyline of the Void is that it makes Eternal Scourge completely unkillable. Tradition map. Okie dokie. That gives me a window to resolve an abundant growth. And thanks to Urborg, I will have mana off of fetch lands even if they do agent me. I don't think they've seen a Swords to Plowshares yet out of me. I have one this time. Ooh, this is it's tough. Uh, the Force of Will gives me some breathing room, though. I could just put Abundant Growth on my fetch land and skip the whole song and dance, but if they have Wasteland, that makes it really awkward. I have Swords to Plowshares in my hand. I can just fetch and skip the Ponder. Yeah, I'm just going to fetch. All right, we're in there. I'm going to get an island and abundant growth it. Right, now I have two ponders. Ponder is my blue card for force. I am going to cast one of them. Mist Hollow Griffin, baby. All right. Mist Hollow Griffin is now my blue card for force. It's like drawing a card instead of exiling a card from your hand when you pitch Griffin to force. I have swords to plowshares for Merit Lage. I have... Force of Will to protect my hand from Thought Seas. I have Seeds of Innocence for the Saga. Force pitching Mist Hollow Griffin, just free as possible. They're going for it. Or at least putting Vampire Hex Mage into play. I don't know if they're actually going for anything yet. I can ponder. Oh, Caracas. That's filthy. 
Problem is, I don't actually want to Caracas. I'm going to play Triome. And, like, I kind of want them to commit to the, the Hex Mage here. That gets the creature and the Dark Depths out of play. Yeah. Do I lose to Not of This World right now? Hope they don't have that card. I didn't play around it. Okay. All right, you're at 40. Saga's about to do Saga things. Using the map with the floating Saga mana, get Ancient Tomb. Thought sees me. Okie dokie. Glad I hid the Caracas. I'm gonna brainstorm. Wow, that's a lot of shit. Well, I'll get rid of the shit. Still fetching right now while they can't. Agent. Done a pretty good job avoiding that. Difficult fate. Gonna pop Yorian in my hand. Got a nice little Yorian loop here, drawing two cards, pick it up with Caracas. Setting up a long game. I could play Eternal Scourge and Ice Fang Coatl this turn and just set up for a giant Yorian. Caracas, that gives them a really good thing to Pithing Needle. I really don't want Yorian to get discarded though. Don't think this deck can make Merit Legion instant speed, like there's no crop rotations or anything. Oh wow, they're just conceding to this engine. All right, two leagues and two refreshingly honest combo players. On to the next round. We're a few rounds into the video. Thanks for sticking with me. Friendly reminder that if you're still here and having fun, smash that subscribe button. And if you want to play what I'm playing, you can use my affiliate link for TCG Player to support the channel while you shop for cards. And you can try any deck anytime with a cardhoarder.com loan account for Magic Online. All these links are in the video description below. Now back to the league. I'm on the draw against... I play bad decks. I'm going to keep my hand. Last time I played this person, they were on like a white stompy kind of deck with like solitude and shit in it. An ancient tomb. My hand is really bad against Chalice of the Void, so let's, let's not do that. Riddle Smith, oh baby, here we go. Okay, this is not a white stompy solitude deck. This appears to be an Echo of Eons Riddle Smith deck, and we are going for the races here. Force of Will, JK. I got nothing. Right, I found Force of Negation for the second time around, but they have a fresh seven and Riddle Smith active. Please don't have a, a Daredevil. Oval Chase Daredevil turns Riddle Smith from loot into draw a card. And that shit is bad for me. They don't have a Daredevil. Let's commit to another Echo. How about that? Just give me, give me a chance here. Discarded Containment Construct. Holy guacamole. That's not a card I can beat. Not a card I can counter either. Whenever you discard a card, you may exile that card. Yeah, so now Riddlesmith is just drawing cards. How long can you cast it? I cast it this turn. Oh god. Oh yeah. We're having fun now. I've been bobbled. They saw the ponder at random. And they saw the same ponder at random. Discarded a bobble to the bobble. Get to see the top card on my deck. They have three draws coming. Discarded Lotus Petal. Oh, this deck is sweet. Lotus Petal gets another loot. Karn. Uh, Alright, I have the force for that. They can cast it with LED, and if you use LED, you can exile all the cards. A Prismatic Ending off that bobble. Oh, there's two gambles. Right, exiling some gambles. But they're out of mana. It's Karn or it's Gamble. Oh, I get it. You can gamble for LEDs and just have zillions of mana. Oh, this is great. We're having a good time here. I guess I should have countered. No, because there's another gamble. No, no. I got to wait for the Karn. <laughs> the LED found a bobble. Found another bobble. Okay, there's a saga. Finally, something they can't play off of the construct. Another gamble. Getting breakthrough. <laughs> oh, baby. Right, so they're just going to draw another four cards. Oh, this is great. Okay, um, Defense Grid in Exile. I hate that. Lotus Petal, Bauble, Riddlesmith. From Mox, but can't Exile, but you do get another loot off of it. Another Riddlesmith. Okay. Now we're doing two. This is terrifying. Uh, they're almost certainly going to be able to find the mana to Defense Grid and Karn here. Chrome Mox for no imprint, but two loots. Exile another defense grid. We're echoing. Um, yeah, I'm going to force that. I'm going to pitch Uro, because I don't... Th I think I need Ponder more than I need Uro. 
Right now I can F6. They have, what, five, six, seven, like millions of draws with baubles to reload here. Survived a turn, but they have six draws. It's a full seven card hand at the other end. Holy shit. This is great. I'm going to get Tundra and shuffle this or yeah okay f6 maybe i should have kept the quaddle as a green card for endurance but that's not really moving this game forward either i'm just gonna be honest in f6 here got lion's eye diamond yeah i mean none of this happens if my opening hand has a force in it but this is very exciting a grape shot in exile now we see a win condition emerge I don't like that containment construct on Magic Online continues to show the cards that are exiled with it. Like Once you can't cast them anymore, I wish they would just go to the exile zone. But there is reminder text of what can and can't be played this turn. Uh, they had to wheel, but yeah, I found Forest, but no blue card. Disappointing. Storm is five. Oh, Brain Freezes in this deck too. My goodness. Narsa. Okay. We're learning so much. Narsa found Bobble, Bobble, discarded another Bobble and a Mox Opal. Lion's Eye Diamonds in play. The important thing about Containment Construct is the cards are briefly in the graveyard. So Graveyard Hate does work at slowing down or stopping this combo. And they can just gamble for an Echo. Zillions of mana here. I'm just letting them go off at this point. I can see that I'm dead. Opal from Exile. Is it possible that they deck themselves? And obviously they're going to pay attention to that, but like all these cards getting exiled with Containment Construct are not in the pool for future Echoes. Right, so my hand is empty now. Completely empty, because I have already drawn cards this turn. Don't even get the one. I just want to see this combo. Let's go. Is Okay, the Grape Shot and the Exile cards are already lethal. All right, yeah, I've seen enough. Okay, you got me. And Riddle Smith is optional, so can't force the action there. Yeah, that was sick. Okay, uh, Collector Oof is not a card they can beat. Deafening Silence looks like it's going to be rough. Surgical Extraction, Hole Breacher, Energy Flux. Cluster Storm seems kind of medium, but probably worth it. I don't know that I want Seeds of Innocence. And it can destroy defense grids, if that becomes a thing that I care about. Sorts of Plowshares seems important. Just holding up a plow to kill Riddlesmith is another way to collapse this engine. Am I just off the combo? Like, is that possible? Let me see what that looks like. Play from the Loam, Eternal Scourge, Mist Hollow Griffin's still fine, like Manipulate Fate and Force Will are still cards in the deck. Uh, Krasis and Ballista. I just Uro beat down. Recruiter of the Guard would leave the deck at this point as well. Do I get Loam back, or do I want one Food Chain? One Food Chain doesn't matter. I feel like this is a deck that I just grind into the dust, or I don't. And... Comboing them out seems completely peripheral to anything that actually matters here. I still have Field of the Dead. I have my pile of Uros. Walking Ballista does pick off Riddlesmiths proactively. And maybe less manipulate fate. This makes sense to me. I'm going to try it. And I rely on Force of Will to do enough here. I'm going to keep. And... Play my Zagoth Triome. This sets up a Prismatic Ending on Defense Grid next turn. Okay. This is exactly what I, I mapped out, unless they can Defense Grid and Riddle Smith right now. All right, the Bobble saw the Force of Will, spiked it. So they know there's a Force over here. Okay, this makes blue-green. I need white. I'm going to get the Tundra. Yes. White. Black. I hate that they saw Force of Will. Why didn't you see just any other card? Now you know. There's a Saga. Oh no. I'm in trouble. Yeah, if they just beat me with Urza Saga fair and square, that's, uh, that's a game plan. There's Construct. Do I force this? 
I think so. Card does not seem beatable. Uh, I had ending for that though. Maybe I could have waited a turn. I don't know. Prismatic ending lotus petal, or am I saving endings for? I don't have two white, so I might as well just pick off what I can where I can. Keep the critical mass low. Endurance is a free spell. Like if I wasn't gonna draw a land, happy to find a free spell. Got Mistress Bobble. That's exciting. Didn't just like slam a Shadow Spear. Still taking a lot of damage here. Ice Fang Coatl. Not the most helpful. Though, could be worse. I think Coatl and Block for a turn is better than Prismatic Ending right now. Because they absorb the same amount of damage, but one of them's a cantrip. I guess I should do it now in case I had a land. Green. Okay, Force of Negation. Coatl's not even close to Death Touch. Lion's Eye Diamond. That's an extra damage. I'm at seven. Elbow tapped. They're ancient tombs. Taking six. You need another blue. This is a hard cast echo. Breakthrough for X is four. Don't want this to happen. Okay. I can prismatic ending one of these. And if the card in hand and draw step are both artifacts, I'm dead. Probably dead to an echo. Got another big breakthrough coming. Okay. If two of these four cards are artifacts that they can cast, I'm dead. Yeah, I'm regretting that uh, prismatic ending on Lotus Petal. That might have been way too aggressive. I could have just ended these two constructs and been back into the holding pattern. Okay. One is not seven. Or one is not zero. Removal spell? Uh... I guess I need to Uro into a Swords to Plowshares or a Prismatic Ending. Here we go. A Ponder. Uh, there's no Force of Vigor in this deck. Yeah, I'm dead. Okay. Uh, I knee-jerk kind of panicked, wasted a Prismatic Ending. I think I could have stabilized this board and at least waited my way through the next Saga. In missing the land drops until turn 6, obviously. Super shitty, but... We did shut down the combo. The hand did do what it was supposed to do, but just tied to Urza Saga instead. Yeah, combo decks that also have Saga in them are are scary. Got me good. On to the next round. On the play for round four. Hands got lands, brainstorm, Uro. I'm keeping. And Misty Rainforest, go. I hope none of my opponents put me on death and taxes. I hope I've earned more respect from the community than that. I just remembered that I've been revealing Yorion. All these rounds. Okay, I don't know what I'm looking for off Brainstorm yet, so I'm not going to cast it. And the only sorcery I'd want to cast, or I guess I have Abundant Growth and Ponder, so there's a couple sorceries I would have liked to main phase there. But Brainstorming this Mystic Sanctuary back into my deck is going to be nice. This is not where I want it in my hand. Did not shuffle their Ponder. Island. E-Storm. Swords to Plowshares and Mystic Sanctuary. Okay, against the Flooded Strand Ponder deck, Swords to Plowshares kind of looks medium. I could actually put back Plow and Eternal Scourge, fetch two islands, and then put the Sanctuary back into play this turn and pick up the Brainstorm. Is that even something I want to do? I don't think so. I will keep the Eternal Scourge around, though. Okay. Who do I fetch Triome here? That could be sweet. Yeah, I'll get it in. A basic land. I think the basic land gives me the freedom to Uro here. Uro is my blue card for force right now, but there's another one. And now I have my entire combo. All right, let's hope this works. From Jeskai mana over there to fairy. Who I care about to fairy? I have. I'm a green card away from going off this turn. I could force a negation pitching crisis, or I could just try to muscle through. If I don't force, then I never force. And that's just how that card works. Okay. Um, also just cast crisis, and it's a really shitty creature for them to bounce. So, yeah, sure. Very bounce nothing. And I could Mystic Sanctuary my brainstorm here. Is that better than... Simply drawing a card. Probably. 
Yeah, because now I have this force of negation in my hand that's bad. No white man in my hand, but I don't need it for what I'm planning here. Brainstorm, let's go. All right, I found a green card. And put back these forces. And then food chain. And I have this. And then pitch cast endurance. I guess I'm just going to go for it here. Target my opponent with the ability, just in case they're a Snapcaster Mage situation. And then Exile Endurance. And Eternal Scourge. Okay, we appear to be doing the thing. I can not quite escape Uro, but uh, Hydrate Crisis, its draw ability is a trigger. We get to draw my deck and load up here, even if they have Counterspell in their hand which I feel like they would have used by now if they had. This is where the, the combo in your control deck pays off, when you just get to do something stupid like this in a control mirror. You could also force a will this Eternal Scourge at like any time and break me up here. Not really doing what I want to be doing. I'm going to float some green, that way if they force the Scourge, I can at least escape Uro and put the Scourge back into exile. That's another interaction in food chain decks that I haven't mentioned yet. Uro escaping eating your enabler creatures is just escape Uro draw card. This line is rough on the old clicker though. This is the point in real life where I would just declare that my deck's in my hand, but on Magic Online you have to sort of measure like what's going to be enough to win the game reasonably versus like the clock of clicking. And the Teferi has me pretty worried, honestly. Because normally you would just have a giant grip and you'd have more forces than they can get through. Also, this is an 80-card deck, not a 60-card deck, so there's extra clicking involved there. Your opponent never owes you a concession. Plus, they have Teferi in play and seven cards in hand, so they probably might even think they're doing okay over there. They're just waiting for the Walking Ballista and LOL got ya. But I'm not on Ballista. And Krasis only draws half X cards, so to draw my deck, I need to put 120 mana into this, and then I need to go off again to cast the Ballista, and even then, they could wait the Force of Will for that. And even if they do a Force for Ballista, I can set up, like, a pretty insane board here that involves, like, Uro, all my Coatles, all my... Griffins, Yorian. That would probably leave 10 cards in my deck in real life. And I want to make sure I can still Uro at the end of all this. Alright, 10 minutes have been incinerated off my clock since the start of the match, not necessarily since the start of the combo. But it's probably about time to pick a number and cast Crisis. Just hope it's enough. Okay, uh, Crisis. Green, blue. One, two, Three. X is four. I want to leave seven mana in my pool. One, two, eleven, twelve. All right, X is sixty. That sounds like a good number. So I gain thirty life, draw thirty cards. Hope it's enough. This is a trigger, so force of will doesn't matter. If they don't have force of will, I get a sixty sixty. Okay, who's in my hand? Griffin is Ruder of the Guard. Let's go. Find the Ballista. There's Ballista. And... Okay, they actually did just want to see the win. Uh, they they could have waited. They could have eaten another several minutes off my clock. I appreciate that they didn't. It's been a generous opponents this league. Shout out to all my opponents who have not made me click past the point that was necessary. Just guy control, huh? Uh, this is the Narsa Teferi matchup that I mentioned in the deck tech. I'm a little worried about. This deck's pretty soft to... Planeswalkers, I like Carpet, Veil, vale. uh, Cluster Storm maybe? Uh, maybe? I think I want my Hall Breachers. Source of Plowshares is only good if they have Hall Breacher, which not every list has. So it's a big problem if they do. Ours, it's a big problem anyway. Force of Negation, I think I should be pretty aggressive about the, the Planeswalkers. Do I want Plow in case of Hall Breacher? Or am I just ignoring creatures, going full combo goblin? 
Life from the Loam, not important to this matchup. They have a lot of basics, and they're not really gonna beat up my mana. I guess they could have Ruinations and stuff, but my seven basics can push through that. I've kind of, I'm kind of hoping to just play an Endurance Hall Breacher kind of game here. If I'm doing that, then I should get a little lower to the ground and get the Fluster Storms in here. Recruiter is just a solid body somehow uh, in these fair matchups, even if I'm not going off. I don't think I want to cut a Manipulate. I think I'd cut a Food Chain before I cut a Manipulate. Maybe it's just Uro. Maybe it is Force Negation. Uh-oh, running out of time here. I'm going to cut a Fluster Storm, actually. I think Force is better, because Planeswalkers are going to be the main axis of fighting this game. Manipulate ending. I'll keep this. I love a turn to manipulate. Hard to get away from it. I'm just all kinds of set up on basic lands here. They are a Pyroblast deck. Just a unfortunate situation. But I am just going to go straight for the, the manipulate here. And I draw four. Oh yeah, I can. Dirge and the Griffins get out. And this is the type of deck where their removal's really bad against me because Swords of Plowshares just puts these creatures right back where I can cast them again. Ooh, Tropical Island. Is this a four color, secret four color deck the whole time? There's Teferi. Walking Ballista can finish him off if he bounces, which he did. Yeah, I genuinely don't want to play against a fairy. Using the Ballista this early, it makes my combo a lot worse, but I also have uh, Endurances in my deck. And like I said, due to the clock, I'm not really trying to combo this matchup. I would like to pressure their creature answers first. Oh, this is this is the Spunky deck. Oh, is this Spunky? Cephalic Coliseum. The... Yeah, I released this deck recently okay the coliseum tech out of four color control is hot nars that's a problem i'm ready with recruiter though didn't want a prismatic ending my abundant growth see if i can get you with that later prismatic ending that is a white spell exile narset and then ponder okay this deck is not going to do anything to my lands uh it might have wasteland in it yeah i think it does have wasteland in it force of negation and veil of summer i'm gonna put force of negation in my hand and veil of summer under it i want to have my Uro around so force pitching force if i need to protect myself this turn is pretty good to fairy okay force pitching force because these are gone anyway tap the red source and if this is the list I expect it to be, the only other red source is a Triome that can't come into play and Pyroblast me right now. Uh, almost misclicked and cast Veil of Summer. It's not what I want to do. I cast Uro. Get to work here before Nar sits in play. All right, looks like we're getting Swords to Plow shared along the way. All good. That's fine. Two for one. And pass the turn. Uh-oh, now I'm in trouble. Gotta find a wasteland pretty quick. That's how quick the tables turn. Oh, and it might be too late. Oh, no lands left. It doesn't mean four spells, but it means no Field of the Dead just yet. Okay, my Uro is gone. I can fetch a planes here. Start diverse. Wait, where's my planes? In the graveyard? What's happening? Oh, it's literally in play already. Good job, me. Um, guess I'm getting an island then. White. Actually, I'm just going to start casting Mist Hollow Griffins. I don't think this deck can reasonably beat that, and I'm just going to start doing it. They're going to have to combo me with uh, Echo, or uh, not Echo, uh, Undoing, or some similar. I can exile Uro. I'm much more worried about the clock than my opponent's deck right now. For sure. Here comes Uro. You got it. Uro sets you miles back on Cephalid Coliseum, which is an insane engine if this game ever gets grindy. Don't think I want to. Mystic Sanctuary. Ending. 
white, blue, prismatic, and you. Force of will. We're gonna get a tropical island. Cast veil. Okay. Not be countered. I found a food chain. Well, new plan. I'm gonna leave back Mist Hollow Griffin to block the zombies. And no zombies, no spells. Handful of spells over there. I can cast food chain or I can just goof around. Oh, let me cast food chain, see what happens. If I can just like win here, I'll take that. Or we can force some sort of action. Okay, force of will. Uh, I guess I'm going to start attacking. Uh, I'm going to cast Eternal Scourge. He's going to start using all these unkillable threats that I have. Opponent has two spells, Prismatic Ending, and one Mystery Card in hand. That's kind of a rough one. Please don't undo my day. Force of Negation. All right, I care very little about that. I'm on the creature half of my deck now. I can attack Narset. Oh, baby. All Breacher. Showing up strong. I'm going to attack Narset with both of my creatures. Endurance, I guess, would be pretty rough here. Uh, Pyroblast, sure. A double block on Eternal Scourge. All right. They have stabilized against my, my Exile Dinguses, at least until I find an Uro. One, two, three, four. I can't cast Mist Hollow right now. I'm going to pass and see if I can spike with Hallbreacher. And I have Ice Fang Coatl. Otherwise. Narset activation. Another Reb shit. Cycling Timeless Dragon. That's a good one. On Tundra, which makes a zombie. Okay. Starting to slide backwards a little bit here. Probably going to... Yep, Timeless Dragon. Yeah, I need an Uro to reset my, my graveyard things. I'm going to take two. And then use Coatl to either trade with the Timeless Dragon, the Reb, or the Narset. I even have two. If they counter it. Then I can just cast the other and still draw a card. Yeah. Flush that one out. Van Coatl. Oh, baby. Uh, okay. Um, one, two, three. One, two, three. All right. I'm going to attack the Narset first. We know there's a Force of Negation over there. Is there a blue card to go with it? Food Chain. There's one mystery card in hand. It was Force of Will. Okay. A prismatic Ending is the only card in the hand right now. Now is your time, Hall Breacher. Let's go. Slam Brainstorm. I have life points. This isn't a huge deal. Brainstorm, 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 Brainstorm. Prismatic Ending. Okay. Finally use their Ending. Oh, are they trying to get to... Right, I'm not going to cast Hall Breacher. I want that to be a brutal surprise when it happens. Oh my god. Oh shit. No, they're gonna... They're gonna hit me with Cephalid Coliseum. That's what's going on right now. Alright. That's what's happening. Okay. Uh, target player draws three, discards three. So I can discard everything that isn't Hall Breacher. And... Yeah, I think that's the play. So I still have Hall Breacher. And I can put Yorian in my hand. We're both Hellbent. Well, you're Hellbent. I don't know why I said we're both. They are Hellbent. Cast Brainstorm. Just set me free. Break me out of this. Yeah, that was a really aggressive use of Cephalid Coliseum. I kind of like it. All right. Please don't have an answer. Gonna... I mean, you would have played a land, right? I hope the card is Prismatic Ending. The Swords to Plowshares just gets the easy answer here. Red Blast, Snapcaster Mage, Endurance. Oh, Endurance would be a huge fucking beat. Would have played a land. I just have to hope it's Prismatic Ending or Force of Negation. I gotta beat the Narset. If you, if the one draw here was Endurance, okay, Pyroblast was gonna get me anyway. And then one, two, three, four. All right, get back in there, Mist Hollow Griffin. You're up, buddy. F6. Wasteland was the draw. That's fine. That means Narset's dead. I'm unlocking my Brainstorm. All right, I'm ahead here. Attack Narset. Finish you off. Gonna Abundant Growth, one of my islands. I still have my land drop. Uh, brainstorm while I can here. Food Chain, hell yeah. 
uh, put back Yield of the Dead and Yorian? Or do I want... No, I want a Yorian now. Um, okay. Put back Lusterstorm and Flooded Strand. Play Field of the Dead. Play Food Chain. Then I'm just going to go until I can cast Yorian. I am approaching five minutes on the clock here. Dangerous business. I think I win this game as soon as I find an Uro. But I am a bit away from that. Just getting my, my creatures into play here. I can start attacking. Fun and Growth comes back. I draw the Fluster Storm and then pass the turn F6. We're just sprinting to the end at this point. The race is on. They have only a four different land names. Nice deck building, Brian. It's fine. The Ice Fang Coatl was already good once in this game. And the Mist Hollow Griffin has the Fake Vigilance. Second main, Exile Griffin, Play Griffin. I don't really expect Buster Storm to hit anything here, but it is like stopping my... Oh. They're regrowing Pyroblast. Right. I have my own Mystic Sanctuary, though, which can get Brainstorm from my graveyard. Try to reset this. Or blast my Yorian. Yes, that works. Gotta block one of these. Absorb what I can. Four minutes on the clock. Mystic Sanctuary. Get back. I think Ponder is better than Brainstorm here. Back Ponder. If I can Ponder to find Uro, then I'm just doing it. This is bad. Shuffle that, yes. Back. Per the usual. More worried about the clock than anything else here. Ponder. Storm is one for Fluster Storm. Someday we'll get there. I can't win a game three, so I have to win this one. One, two, three, four, five, six lands. A fetch land gets me two zombies of my own. They did not shuffle. I hate that. All right. Exile Griffin in response to it being killed. Much better in Exile than it is in the Graveyard. All right, deck. Uro. Veil of Summer. Okay. One, two, three, four. Here's this card. Go. Oh. God. Four mana. Well, uh... This, oh, it's already getting exiled, so don't need to float mana. Yeah. Just doing tempo stuff here. Oh, I'm at four. Shit, I'm dead. All right. I just lost track of my life total. Well, I can't win a game three, so unfortunate. Yeah, that was a nice tempo at the end there. Couldn't find an Uro. Uh, that would have won the game on the spot. Yeah, this deck can't win in three and a half minutes, so we're already dead. I'm just going to try to play correctly. Okay, so this is not just guy, like I thought in game one. This is four color loam business. Uh, which means I do want my own loams back in. Fun of growth good, carpet's good. Not gonna have time to food chain. That's kind of annoying. If red blasts. Do I want hydroblast to fight pyroblast? Is that better than fluster storm? That's possible. If I was playing to a real match, I think I would want one surgical in. Because they're going to have loams, and we know they have Uros. Uh, they're going to have Expressive Iteration and Pyroblast. I think Hydroblast is going to hold up into the late game better than Flusterstorm. Right, I'm just going to pretend there's a late game. In paper, I would be doing the exact opposite thing. I'd be focusing on food chain because it's the only way I can win in three minutes. But on Moto, that is going to take more than three minutes to click through. Just awkward incentives. I'll keep this hand that contains Uro. Ponder from the opponent. Waddle. My land, unfortunately, doesn't cast that. I have to get Island because I'm on this two lander. Ugh. Punished for doing that. Okay, I'm just going to concede. I'm brainstorm locked. I can't cast any of the spells in my hand, and I'm going to time out anyway. Like, we were just playing for the exhibition, and no reason to exhibit what a brainstorm locked hand looks like. Maybe I'm just supposed to get Tropical Island there and fuck Wasteland, but knowing that they are a four-color alone deck that has Wasteland, and yeah, would have been better, but also could be worse. GG, on to the last round. I'm on the play for the final round. This hand is pretty bad. 
It's got two and a half lands in it. If I knew my opponent was Delver, I would consider it, but I'm going to mulligan as is. This one's also awkward, but for its own set of reasons. This one, I think, is better than the last one. It's still super awkward. I'm going to keep and try to produce a blue source before I'm dead. Uh, I can send Kawaddle or Force of Will. I think if I'm keeping a spec hand like this, maybe it's actually Food Chain that I send. Yeah, okay. Food Chain needs the most moving parts to do what it's supposed to do. If my opponent's a combo deck, this Force of Will isn't bad. Uh, the Caracas could punish as well. I'm just going to play Besaju and kind of hide the Caracas. Mountain. Basic Mountain Go. This is literally a conversation we had this week on the Eternal Glory podcast. What do you do if your opponent has Landbox Mountain Pass? Like, specifically Landbox Mountain. We talked about art. Like, we, it was an episode about how to get information from your opponent uh, to fill in the gaps, like the information gaps that exist in Magic. And Magic Online might be a little different. Oh, this, these are intentional Landbox Mountains. And we talked about the difference between, like, uh, Landbox Mountain and Beta Mountain and what deck doesn't have a one drop or this one doesn't have a one drop or a two drop with M21 Mountains, but they do match. Okay, this is some sort of red stompy or it could be a red combo deck. Able of the Mirror Breaker. Uh, I have Swords to Plowshares for this. I'm going to use the tools that I have where I have them. I'm on Island. Let's go. Yeah. Well, now I regret bottoming that food chain, but it's all good. I'm going to manipulate my fate. Dirge. Griffin. Griffin. Found another land. All right. I can start griffining next turn. I can brainstorm with a fetch land next turn, or I could just get Uro down. We'll see what happens. Uh, Kawaddle's looking like a likely pitch to Force of Will. Against these mid-range red stompy this looks like a slow draw from stompy i don't know that there is like a mid-range mono red deck in legacy this is a a hand without ancient tomb it looks like to me you get to discard up to two cards and draw that many cards three ball all right confirmed bottoming the food chain in my opening six was me playing to the floor not to the ceiling like if you play to the ceiling then you keep the food chain and hope to cheese a win on your kind of awkward hand versus playing to the floor. Oh, I hate using a force on this because my deck is generally good against it, but I'm in a position where I have to. Like Food chain was the card that needed the most support to get off the ground in my opening hand. Now I kind of wish I had one, but like, you know, have your cake and eat it too. Do I want to brainstorm first or Uro first? I could also just cast Mist Holographin. I don't think that I want basic planes. And my hand is actually already good. I think I want to get Uro off the ground. Start moving in that direction. If I find the land, Force plus Fetch is Uro. If I can get blue, blue, green, green together. And there it is. Okay, I have blue, blue, green, green. And the necessary things. And I, I can Uro backed by Force of Will. They do have five cards in hand. They're about to flip into Kiki Jiki. Reflection of Kiki Jiki. A lot of stuff I can ignore here. Oh. Can't ignore that, but I also can't counter it. <laughs> Shit. That sucks. Okay. Uh, I don't know anything in my deck right now, so I'm just going to draw and get to work on Uro. Jandra can minus X to exile Uro, but. Not with, not with Caracas around. And get another basic island. Yeah, that's the closest thing to playing around Blood Moon I'm capable of doing right now. Green, green, blue, blue. The Caracas is holding the fort here. Put in Polluted Delta. Okay. Burrow can outpace Big Chandra. Arrakis can keep Uro from dying to Big Chandra. Refilling my graveyard might be tough afterwards. But I am, at all points, threatening a combo kill. It's backed by Force of Will at the moment. 
Chandra minus X bounce Uro here. The necessary evil, but still better than getting it exiled forever. Another fable. I can't don't think I can afford to force that. I gotta do better. And force losing brainstorm isn't free here. Brainstorm is a card that goes into the graveyard easily for Uro, and it's also just a good card. Uh I think I have to respect that one. Because I've every decision I've made so far has been to slow this game down, and that speeds the game up. I just gotta stay consistent on that. Mystic Sanctuary is online, it's just not good. So, no thanks. Take one here. Draw, oh, Prismatic Ending. Are you good? One, two, three. One, two, three. I could cast Eternal Scourge. Does this copy target creature you control? All right, so I can still Scourge. I could also exile the Fable before it gets to do anything else. I think I'd rather Scourge, though. Green, blue, blue, burrow up front. I could have killed Chandra here with Ballista, but I still think combo killing with Ballista is going to be a better use of that card. Okay, that's exciting, because now I get to... I, I can still kill the thing with Ballista if I think that's important. It puts a card in the graveyard. Is that important? Or should I just Mist Hollow Griffin and start trying to like squat up here? I think I want to miss Hollow Griffin and start playing towards a world where I can actually win the game and not just tread water while I lose. If they do something that results in Mistollow Griffin dying this turn, then it's in a graveyard where Uro can consume it. Ballista is only getting bigger. They do get some really good card selection here. Yeah, this Chandra is fucked. Main deck Awakened Inferno. I had the Force of Will. I planned out a whole game, and then they were just like, nah, City of Traitors, big Chandra. Only discarded one card. That's scary. That means three, two of the cards in their hand already were good. I'm F6ing here. I'm just being very honest in interest of saving my clock. The emblem is a plus two even. So if they just drop another emblem on me, I can't even pick off Chandra. Am I more worried about the reflection? I think so. That seems like it has scary potential copying Rebel Master and whatever. I don't like them getting extra mana, but whatever. They could have used the Kiki Jiki to copy the Shaman and then gotten two treasures and still killed my Griffin. Weird. Brooder of the Guard. Uh, I'm going to use that. Brooder of the Guard. Yes. Do I want Ice Fang Coatl or Hydrate Krasis? Probably Krasis. Because that's a good elbow tap next turn. And. Now I am going to go in on Ballista. I can kill Chandra and leave a body behind. Get rid of that. Now I'm just taking one per turn. I can, I can outmuscle that. And I have two bodies that I'm happy to feed to Uro. And losing Ballista means that I can't combo kill my opponent, but just a XX crisis, gaining 30 life, drawing 30 cards should be enough to win this matchup. All of that assumes I ever find a food chain. I'm one land away from putting two counters a turn on Ballista, and every creature in their deck is a 2-2. Like, I could just hide behind 8 mana, pick off everything they do. I don't think I'm going to do that, for the record. It's just a thing that is there. If they Blood Moon me, I think I have to do that. Because I have not found my basic... All of my fetch lands I've drawn this game are just mono blue. Maybe I could have got the planes once, but I needed the blue for Uro at the time. I can cast Mist Hollow Griffin and Ethereal Eternal Scourge, not Ethereal Scourge, Eternal Scourge and Mist Hollow Griffin with the mana I have even through a Blood Moon. Oh, we got Confluence for Destroy Target Artifact and Roast Me. I'm going to deal one to the, the Goblin token. That way, if it attacks, I still get a trade. Oh, it fizzles the whole shit. That's right, because there's no legal targets. I forgot about that, but I got the bonus there. So, a spell with no legal targets fizzles. Deal two to each opponent doesn't have a target. Destroy target artifact means the spell only had one target, and by moving, removing Walking Ballista, the spell entire spell fizzled. So I just saved for life while doing all that other shit. That was great. Brainstorm, great draw, always. It fuels the Uro. Oh, food chain. Don't even need it. Okay. Put back. 
planes and prismatic ending. And then one, two, three, food chain, baby. We're in there. And they know I have crisis in hand. They see the infinite everything there. Let's see how far they make me go on this one. Again, we find ourselves in a situation where IRL, I would simply declare I'm drawing all but three cards in my deck and then pass the turn with my opponent asked what the uh, what the kill is. I took the time to explain I'm going to make a gigantic crisis, cast every creature in my deck and pass the turn with all my counter spells up. It's always a gamble of like, what's the kill? Like you can spend 30 seconds talking about it, and maybe they concede if they believe you, or maybe you just waste 30 seconds clicking. This opponent was on the level, though. Appreciate it. Shout out. Okay, Red Prison, or Red Stompy. I don't really know what the prison versus Stompy elements of the current configurations are. We saw Trinisphere. We have to assume Chalices in this deck, but these decks are built much more attacky than they have been in the ancient past. In the middling past, in like medieval times, it, it was an attacking deck also. The, there's like the Trinisphere Blood Moon end of the spectrum, and then there's like the Mono Rabble Master end of the spectrum. And we saw Rabble Master and Trinisphere and Fable the Mirror Breaker in this particular build. Seeds of Innocence can wipe out three balls and, and chalices if I think that's important. I'm not even convinced I care about that. They're a Magus of the Moon deck, so they can't really play Urza Saga in good conscience. All Breacher does shut down part of Fable of the Mirror Breaker, and it's another creature that can attack and block pressure planeswalkers. There's not a whole lot of counterplay for this matchup, because I'm mostly set up in the main deck for it. Abundant Growth is unfortunately bugged on Magic Online, or at least it was for a while. I don't know if they fixed it, but I don't know if I want to risk it. Abundant Growth should always work under Blood Moon. Timestamp doesn't matter because Blood Moon is a type changing effect and Abundant Growth is an ability granting effect. And the layers should always, like, if you put Abundant Growth on your Savannah and your opponent plays Blood Moon, that Savannah should tap for any color. But on Magic Online, it doesn't. Like, Magic Online thinks it's a timestamp, but it's not. So uh, I've got to be careful with that. It's a thing I'm aware of. I guess this isn't really a lone matchup. And. I could cut Field of the Dead if I think they're going to moon me. I have answers to moons, though. So am I playing to Field of the Dead? It is pretty good if we get there. Force Negation is important. Manipulate Fate's important. Wasteland is not important. Okay, I'm going to cut a Wasteland just because I got to find something to cut. And sometimes you can cheese these decks, like lock them under their own Trinisphere with Wasteland. But with my Loam out of the deck, a Wasteland plan gets a lot worse. And with Fable of the Mirror Breaker, they have the Goblin that makes treasures now. Yeah, Wasteland seems like the worst card left in the deck. All right, living the dream here. I have Force with Griffin to pitch. I have a turn one Abundant Growth. Unfortunately, though, we are running into the Magic Online problem where I, if I growth up my Besaju, I feel untouchable in Paper Magic, but on Moto, it might be wrong. I'm going to keep my seven. At all. Tomb, Blood Moon. Well, that one is a problem anyway. I could try to ignore it. I could still try to ignore this. I have seven basics in my deck. Eh. I have the freebie and force of force pitching Griffin. I'm going to take it. Yeah, for what it's worth, I think a Seiju casting Abundant Growth is the best play here. Even though Baseju answers Trinisphere or Chalice or whatever, like. I don't care. All right, let's hope they either don't have another Blood Moon or Magic Online works now. Or they were all in on this turn one Blood Moon. I guess that's like a secret lining to the fact that I barely drew any basic lands game one. I guess, no, I had like three islands in play at the end of the game, and they still kept an all in on Blood Moon hand. Right, kiki Jiki. I can go the whole way up the food chain to Griffin here. If I spike a payoff i can win next turn moment of truth force of negation that's not it i can food chain here i can hold up force of negation i can uro i feel like i want to uro but using uro turns on waddle because i have the snow land in hand already 
Gives me an exciting payoff for food chain, even if I don't quite get there. Found a blue card for force negation. I could have tapped differently and played to drawing a cantrip, but I played to drawing a plow instead. The good news is, if they blood moon me and this abundant growth doesn't work, I'm playing for free. I get a refund on my league. And I get to report the bug again. Or maybe it just works, which is even better. Discarded a blood moon. Okay, so they gave up on that. Or they just have multiple of that effect. Discarded fiery confluence as well. Shook from last game, where I fizzled it with my ballista. Bane fire. Wow, they are not kidding. Yeah, uh, that's gone. Bane fire. That's scary. Does this deck make that much mana? Am I underestimating the treasure guy? Ponder. Working towards this Uro. Recruiter. Okay, that's the win next turn. Not shuffle that. I'm going to hold up Flash and Endurance. I can Flash and Endurance. I actually don't think I'm even going to Endurance in combat. Because there's not a lot of ways they can kill me outright this turn. They don't play a lot of Disruption. Food Chain ignores Trinosphere and Chalice. I can just... If they do something that demands a force of negation right now, that's a problem. Okay, that doesn't demand anything. To make a goblin, they attack me for three here, get a treasure. Yeah, I'm not going to risk my endurance. We've seen removal spells in their deck, or at least things that deal damage. I'm just going to slam endurance in the end step and then win. Get tropical island, green, colorless. Target nobody. They don't use their graveyard, and I do use mine. Okay, I can play a land, which lets me force of negation if they do something. Food chain. Make blue. Play griffin. So I have the entire combo rolled up with force backup. Ira blasting me. Hope they don't have two of those. I'm gonna grab my... I might as well get forest. I have blue, blue anyway. Blue, blue, green. Counter that. You have two. Am I dead if you have two? Are we in there? All right, we're in there. They asked if I have the combo. I told them I have recruiter in hand. I'm going to keep clicking, see if they believe me. They can see the arrow in my graveyard too. So we got multiple points of action. <laughs> they just asked me if I'd pull a rank like that. I'll just show them the recruiter. I would not lie to you. Oop. No lies here. I have demonstrated infinite mana. They said, fair enough, I did not want to get pranked on vid. Don't worry, it's not a prank. I record all my matches. I have a reputation to, compl to, uh, to maintain. I am not going to uh, lie to somebody that I have the win when I don't on camera in a low stakes league. <laughs> GG's opponent. Three and one with Yorian Bant food chain. And one of the losses was a timeout in a matchup where we're heavily favored. Uh, I think that against four-color Uro suit piles, the version with a combo kill is much better than the version without. But, I mean, the clock's part of the game. Not saying, not claiming victory in a match that I lost. Just, we did timeout in a matchup that's good for us. And, yeah, this deck felt really solid. Much better than the last round with it. I, much better than a lot of 60-card decks I've played recently. I've been revisiting the kind of Uro piles lately. I was off them for a while. I, mean, I still wouldn't play them in a tournament. I can't really recommend Uro piles. But if you are going to do an Uro deck, some way to just eject from a game, whether it's Food Chain or Alorin or Days Undoing, whatever it is, you need to be able to slam a game closed because the like Dark Band or Four Color uh, Red game plan of just like expressive iterating and field of the deading and like whatever uh, until your opponent runs out of cards and answers isn't really that good right now due to the presence of Jeskai control and fast combo is back like ad nauseum tendrils is back in the metagame i've seen more show and tell lately than i've seen in a while all of those are tough matchups for slow grindy bant while you and you also just lose the control mirrors because Jeskai has four to seven Narset effects in their 75. And they can daze on doing you and they can ruination you. It's bad. But this version, 
we're not talking about those decks right now. I've released multiple leagues with those four color control decks lately, if you want to go check them out and see it in real life. But this version, I love working towards a combo. I love that in fair matchups, your opponent has to respect the combo. Because normally against a uh, like four color Uro pile or three color, even just like three color Uro, opponents will like cut their force of wills or uh, their force of negations at least and like play to the board and like bring in surgical extraction and stuff to like control your Uros and it's really hard for you to win. But this deck just ignoring Pyroblast even, like Eternal Scourge food chain makes infinite mana through a Pyroblast. Uh, you get to ignore that. Recruiter of the Guard for Ballista ignores Pyroblast. Hydroid Crisis, go ahead, counter the body. I'm still drawing 60 cards and winning anyway. Like that, This deck being able to dodge Pyroblast and threaten a combo kill while also being a completely reasonable Iceman Kualo Uro Swords to Plowshares deck, I like a lot of what's going on here. I'm not convinced you need the Yorian like just being 80 cards, like you could drop the Field of the Dead, drop the Loam, and like tighten up this package. Though Yorian does help you go big in the mid range mirrors. Yorian was really good here. Yorian's also really good with Food Chain. Like more than once this league, I think we did it twice where we had Food Chain, Caracas, Mist Hollow Griffin, Yorian, and we weren't infinite, but we were drawing two extra cards a turn while having seven power of vigilance functional vigilance in play good shit yeah i like everything that's going on in this deck if you wanted to register this deck for a tournament i would not stop you i would not talk you out of it i love basic lands i love resistance to wasteland i love having my own wastelands life from the loams here this is just good shit the sideboard might need some seasoning to taste depending on what your local meta is doing. We didn't play against Delver at all in this league. We played against a lot of combo, where the sideboard is built for combo. I like that. Collector Oof might be better off as Nullrod now, because this the Oof is a holdover from when this was a Green Sun Zenith deck in the previous league I played with it. And you don't always have green mana on turn two, but you should always have two mana on turn two. And Nullrod... It's more important that Nullrod is in play than it has power and toughness in most of the matchups where you want Nullrod. Like, wasting a turn to try to find your green source might be life and death in Nullrod matchups, so maybe Oof is better off as Nullrod. Same reason it's be Nullrod's better than Stony Silence, though you can play any of the three in the Bant Wedge. It's up to you. But without Zenith, I think we're better off. Oh, but we do have Recruiter. Never mind. There is a, a layer to Collector Oof here. Even without Zenith, we can still tutor it. Okay, maybe a Recruiter for Oof. That's slow. It's a five-mana play that happens over multiple turns, probably. But if it's good, it's good. Okay, there's a little tension there that a deck builder will have to work out for themselves. You can also exile Oof to Food Chain while you're going off, so then you can Ballista at the top end. You might be locked under your own Null Rod. Okay, never mind. Two against one in favor of Collector Oof over Nullrod. There's me thinking out loud, live on camera, working through these little deck building nuances. I'm going to leave it there, though. I'm very happy with this deck, very happy with the way it performed. It felt a lot smoother than the last time I played it. I liked the updates. And I'm signing out with that. Dalton, thank you for asking me to revisit the rebuild of this Yorian food chain deck. Everyone else, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.